Today we are going to do something completely different. Instead of exploring service meshes and Kubernetes deployments and you know typical Kubernetes stuff, we are going to see how we can manage our database schemas. Actually, it's not going to be completely different because my requirements for managing schemas are not that far apart from the other requirements I have for the rest of the system. And those requirements shouldn't be surprising if you're watching my channel. I want my schemas to be defined in a way that they can be stored in Git. I would like to manage those schemas with the same tools that I normally use. So if I have a system that is being synchronized using Argo CD or Flux, I would like to use that for schemas as well. If I'm using Customize or Helm to define my applications and schemas are part of my applications because, hey, you don't modify schema if application does not need a change in the schema. So anyways, I want schemas to be manageable using the same tools. If that's Customize or Helm or Argo CD or Flux or all together, I want all that. I want to use the same tool set that I normally use, but with database schemas added to the life cycle of my application. Now I could go with proven tools, you know, tools that everybody is using or everybody should be using like Liquibase or Flyway or something like that, but I'm going to go completely Kubernetes native. I would like my schemas to be yet another Kubernetes resource. And it doesn't really matter whether my database is running in Kubernetes or it's running somewhere else, as long as my application is running in Kubernetes and it is defined as a set of Kubernetes resources, whether that's deployments or stateful sets or Knative or what's or not, I want schemas to be one of those resources as well. So which options do I have? Well, not many. One that caught my attention is Schema Hero. So today we are going to explore Schema Hero as a potential solution for managing our database schemas in a very Kubernetes native way. I will not compare it with Flyway or Liquibase. I mean, if you want me to do that, I can as well. Let me know in the comments. For now, I will focus on Schema Hero independently from the other tools. Let's see how it works, how it looks like, whether it's good or whether it's not good and so on and so forth. So let's go to the demo and see Schema Hero in action. Before I started recording this session, I did a couple of things. I created a Kubernetes cluster. This should work in any Kubernetes cluster. I'm using K3D today. And if you're not familiar with K3D, the link is above my head. But any other Kubernetes cluster should work. I installed PostgreSDB in my cluster. It could be an external database. It, it does not have to run in Kubernetes clusters. For convenience, I'm running it now inside. I could have used other database types. I will show you the list of supported databases later, but today I'm using PostgreSDB. If your database is supported by Schema Hero, it should not matter which database it is. Finally, I installed Schema Hero kubectl plugin. So everything I will do with Schema Hero is based on the plugin. I can operate completely Schema Hero using kubectl commands. And that's awesome. No new tool, no new CLI. I love the tools that are transitioning towards becoming a kubectl plugin. And all the commands that I did before I started recording this session and all the commands that I will execute from now on are in a gist and the URL to the gist is in the description of this video. So check it out if you want to reproduce what I'm doing. The first thing I will do is install Schema Hero and I can do that with the plugin, kubectl plugin. So the command is kubectl uh, schema hero install. I could have used dash dash yaml and then the output would be shown on the screen and then I could store the output in git as I should actually do and manage schema hero itself using Argo CD or Flux and by the way if you're not familiar with those tools the links are in the description. Anyways I will not do dash dash yaml I will go without it and install directly today without using GitOps type of way to manage my stuff because this video is not about GitOps. This video is about a tool that can help us define databases in a GitOps way. And that's about it. Schema operator is installed and now schema operator will deploy create all the resources schema hero needs. And now comes a sad part or negative part of Schema Hero, maybe the only negative part, and that is that we cannot use it to create databases inside of the, in this case, Postgres. So I will need to create the database myself, and I will do that by copying and pasting the command because it will be a big one. Here we are, and the command is this one. I will run a pod inside of my Kubernetes cluster that contains PSQL, which is Postgres, CLI and uh, I will log into Postgres itself. 
And now if I list databases, you can see that I have the default ones, Postgres, template zero, template one. That's not what I want. I want to create database DevOps toolkit and semicolon. And now I have the database. I can prove it to you. Look, here's the database. It would be cool if Schema Hero could create databases for us. It doesn't, it's not such a big deal because that's the least commonly used operation, right? You don't create databases every day. What you do with much higher frequency is actually create tables and manage tables and the rest of the resources inside of that database. So it's a negative point, not a big one. Now let's get out of there and uh, see. I promise that I will tell you which databases are supported. So let me open the documentation and show you that. Here we are. The supported databases are Postgres, MySQL, CockroachDB, Cassandra, and SQLite. Right? Those are the commonly used relational databases or NoSQL type of relational databases. If you do need to manage schemas and your database is not one of those, then schema here is not for you. Most of the commonly used databases are those, so you should be fine assuming that you need to manage schema in the first place, right? Like with MongoDB, there is no schema to manage, so you wouldn't use any of the tools like uh, Schema Hero. Okay, back to the terminal. Now, the first thing we need to do is tell Schema Hero how to connect to the database. So let me show you how the definition that uh, tells Schema Hero how to connect to the database looks like, and that's in db.yaml. And here we are, it's a simple one. It is a Kubernetes resource that is kind database. There is a name for that resource, it can be anything you want. And now comes the important part. Do we want to deploy immediately? And in my case, I said yes, I said true, or not. If I would change this to false, I would need to approve changes to the database, which I think is silly because approval is actually merging the pull request uh, to the git and then propagating it to the cluster and so on and so forth. But anyways, if you want manual approval, you can do that by changing this value to false. And the rest is the connection. It says, hey, in this case, use Postgres as the database, as you saw before, it could be others. And the URI is having this value, which is uh, Postgres as a user, some password, and the connection string, which is basically PostgreSQL uh, 5432 slash DevOps Toolkit, which is my database. Don't freak out right away. This is not how I would normally define it. I would have a Kubernetes secret and you should have a Kubernetes secret. And then this connection string would just point to the secret and it would be saved to store it in Git. But this is a demo. I'm going with a simple option. So just hard coding the value instead of using secrets. By the way, if you don't know how to manage secrets beyond creating Kubernetes secrets, you might want to check sealed secrets, which are very good uh, match for GitOps type of deployments, but any other type of secrets should work. So let's apply this with kubectl dash dash namespace postgresql, and I want to apply whatever is defined in the file name db.yaml. And then we are database connection is defined now is applied to the Kubernetes cluster, and I can confirm that with kubectl dash dash namespace postgresql and get databases. Right here we are. We can see that I'm managing only one database. Again, there could be many. Right, and now comes the main star of the show, and that's table. So let's take a look at one definition of a database table. Uh, cut table .yaml, and here we are. This is how we define tables with database schema. It's just another Kubernetes resource. It contains the name of the database we want to manage, the name of the table that we want to manage, and the schema. Schema again is using Postgres, it could be others, and we have primary key set to ID, and then some columns, which is again ID, which is varchar 12, and some title and uh, I'm setting title to be one of the constraints that cannot be null. And all I have to do to create or apply or modify or edit or delete this table is just uh, to apply it to the Kubernetes cluster. As I said before, I would normally do this with Argo CD or Flux, but this is not a video about GitOps, so I will do that directly by executing kubectl uh, dash dash namespace postgresql and apply dash file name uh, table.yaml. There we are, another Kubernetes resource is created. That's all there is. 
I can just keep applying tables and schema hero will do what needs to be done. And we can confirm that by saying, hey, cube cuttle, dash dash namespace, etc. etc. get tables. And here we are, we have one table right now applied to the cluster which is called DevOps Toolkit Videos. That's not the name of the table in the database. Uh, the name is whatever I specify in the name column, but the name of the resource. Now, every time we create or change a table definition inside Kubernetes clusters, that will initiate schema hero migrations. So let's look at the migrations. Actually, let's look at whether we have any migrations. And we can do that with kubectl schema hero and the namespace is PostgreSQL and we want to get migrations right and we can see that there is one migration because this is the first time we applied the table resource and it was planned 52 seconds ago and executed and approved and it was automatically approved because that's what i defined in the connection to the database i could have said that i don't want automatic approvals which to me would be silly if you're using GitOps uh, tools because then approvals are uh, merges to the main line. Anyways, if you want to manually approve, you could do that, but I'm not doing that today. So let's see what's actually happening. We can uh, describe uh, migration and uh, I need to copy this ID. Here we are. And we can see that it did a couple of things. Actually, it did only one thing. It generated a statement to create the table with those columns. Simply table was not there and schema hero figured out that there is no table. So it uh, decided to create a table. Now, since I'm paranoid by nature, I will go to the database itself, you know, with PSQL client and I will describe the table videos. And we can see, first of all, it's not an error. The fact that it shows me some output means that the table was indeed created. It wasn't there and now it's there. And it's created with those two columns, the same columns that I specified. And one of those columns is indexed and so on and so forth. So let's go out and see what would happen if I would like to alter, if I would like to modify the table. Now with some tools, I would need to create diff type of SQL scripts or diffs of some sort. In case of Schema Hero, I am always defining the end state. So imagine that I modified table.yaml. I already cre created actually a modified version and it is here in table2.yaml. And uh, this is just uh, the same modified version of my table uh, manifest and it's modified in a couple of ways. Actually, let me show you the diff between uh, table.yaml uh, and table2.yaml. And you can see that I did a couple of things. I changed the type of the title field to be var char 100 instead of text and I added a new column description of type text. So I modified the definition of one column and added another column. In now in the real world situation, I would push those changes to Git and then Argo CD or Flux would apply those changes to the cluster and then schema hero operator would do whatever needs to be done. But I don't have Argo CD or Flux running, so I will uh, do the same thing as I, what I did before. So I will just execute kubectl in the namespace, uh, what was it, PostgreSQL, and I want to apply whatever is defined in the file uh, table2.yaml, and hey, a Kubernetes resource was reconfigured, changed, modified. So let's look at the migrations again. Where were the migrations? Here we are. And now we can see that we have two migrations. The old one from before and the new one that was uh, planned, executed and approved 13 seconds ago. And uh, what I'm going to do is describe that to show you what's happening. Where is it? Describe migration uh, with the new ID. And we can see that Schema Hero figured out what to do. It figured out what is the current state, what is the state of the table in the database. It compared it with the new definition inside of the Kubernetes cluster and it did a couple of actions. It modified the table videos to change the title uh, column to be the new type and it altered the table videos again by adding the column description of the type text. And since I'm still paranoid, I will go to the CLI of PSQL itself and I will describe the table videos 
and you can see that the table is there in its full glory and it's doing whatever it's doing it is as it should be right it has three columns instead of two and they're all of correct types so let's get out and uh, one more use case let's say that i'm not happy with the latest change i shouldn't have done those changes i want to revert to the previous version now there is no revert uh, operation itself but what we can do is just apply the older version of the manifest i could just uh, revert the latest commit to git repository and then the magic would be done you know using GitOps. or i can just apply the previous manifest manually and that's what i'm going to do so cube couple dash dash namespace space uh, postgresql and what do I want to do? I want to apply whatever is defined in the file table.yaml, right? This is the older version of the manifest. Uh, the newest one is table2.yaml. There it is. That's all there is. And if you don't believe me, let's go to the client again. And here we are. Uh, ta -da 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 -da. Okay. Describe videos. And now it's only two columns, right? schema hero figured out whatever needs to be figured out and reverted uh, in this case change the title to be text again and remove the description field and so on and so forth so schema hero to begin with i will not compare it with liquid base or flyway if you want me i can do that in a separate video i think they're quite different i mean the logic is similar but what makes schema hero interesting is not whether it's necessarily better or worse than those whether it's different or the same what makes it different is that it is kubernetes native we manage our database schema using kubernetes resources instead of whatever other formats other tools are uh, forcing us or uh, enabling us to use whether that's good or bad really depends how deep you are in kubernetes for me personally being able to manage uh, database schema in the same way as I'm managing everything else and especially since I'm freaky about GitOps and I love Argo CD Schema Hero is a really good project something that I really really like at least for the databases that do have schemas it has a couple of downsides I would like if it would create databases themselves that way I wouldn't need to create databases myself manually that would be a really nice addition to Schema Hero but if, as I said before, it's not a big deal. I do not create databases often. Uh, that's a one-time deal per application normally. So that's kind of okay. What I'm missing more, potentially at least, is a way to migrate data, right? So I can do migration of the schema itself and it's, really, and it's working brilliantly. It's working really great, but not of data. And sometimes you do need to migrate data to the new schema or make some modifications to data and what's or not. So if there is anything I'm potentially missing is data migration. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure whether that should be in Schema Hero because those migrations can be very complicated and sometimes I need to write my custom code and what's or not. But some capability to do data migrations would be nice. That's potentially the only downside I see to Schema Hero. The upsides are kind of obvious. It's Kubernetes native, so I can manage it in the same way as I manage uh, all the rest of the definitions of my application. And it is GitOps friendly. I can easily combine it with uh, Argo CD or Flux. I can keep everything in Git. I can make, I can have approvals to pull requests. It's absolutely awesome if you're really deep into Kubernetes and if you're really into GitOps. Try it out, let me know what you think, and let me know if you would like me to compare it with Flyway or Liquibase or anyways, you know how I work. Uh, you let me know what you want and I put it on my to-do list and eventually I do a video about it.